Alrighty, we're venturing into more use of the Pythagorean theorem, and one of the more practical applications of this is figuring out what distance is on the coordinate plane. The nice thing about the coordinate plane is we get this grid, everything's perpendicular, it lends itself to make perfect right triangles all over the place. So here's what I need you to do. You need to make sure that you have your dry erase marker. You need to make sure you have the dry erase board. Turn it to the side that um, has the coordinate plane on it. That'll make it easier. Of course, an eraser for one of those. And most importantly, calculator to make life a whole lot easier. Okay, so pause at this point. Make sure you go and get those tools. If you don't have access to that, just get a pencil and paper um, and we'll go from there. And it's nice if you had graph paper so that we've got the grid, but if you don't, we can improvise, okay? All right, I want you on your coordinate plane to graph these two points, negative four, two and two, two. So when you sketch it, negative 4, 2 is about here, 2, 2 would be about there. Go ahead and connect those two points to create a line segment, and you should get something that looks like this, okay? Now, if I'm asking you what is the distance between those two points, this one's kind of a no-brainer, simply because, hey, we're on the coordinate plane. This is a straight horizontal line. All I got to do is count. Distance, six units. That's kind of duh, one of those, okay? However, not everything is going to fall on a nice horizontal or even a vertical line segment where you can just count the actual spaces. So what happens if we have something like this? So erase your board and let's look at this one. Zero, zero, the origin, and five, four. All right, graph those two and, and then connect those two points and you get this line segment. Now, if I was asking you for the slope of this line, you'd say, well, the rise over the run, I know it's slanting upward in my head, I'm thinking should be a positive. Um, it's kind of close to a regular 45, so I'm thinking it's pretty close to a positive one slope. And if I was doing that, I would say, all right, rise over run. I go up four. And then I go to the right five. And so my slope is four fifths. Cool. Okay. The slope is measuring how steep that line segment is. But now I actually want to find how long is it? I know on my coordinate plane that this side is exactly five units long. Label that. This side is exactly one, two, three, four units long. Ta-da! It's a beautiful right triangle, and you are Pythagorean theorem wizards at this point. And so you're probably already ahead of me saying, hey, leg squared plus leg squared is hypotenuse squared. Here we go. All right. It really doesn't matter which leg you take first, which one you call A, which one you call B. It doesn't matter. Okay. 25 and 16 is 41. Now, as you get higher up in math, and granted, we're just doing Algebra 1 things, uh, <clears throat> you typically start to leave that radical, square root of 41, as that number because it's exact. We know that when we try to calculate this on our handy dandy calculator, we're going to get a decimal approximation that goes on and on and on. And I know your calculator stops, but the deal is here. In reality, it's irrational and it goes on forever. So we're going to approximate. Oof, that's pathetic looking. I know in my head that the square root of 49 is exactly seven. So this is gonna be less than that. The square root of 36, is exactly six. So this is 
kind of close to the middle, leaning a little bit more to the 6 than the 7. And when I look at my calculator, I say, yep, rounding to the tenths place, it's approximately 6.4. So since we're on the coordinate grid, we'll label this as units. All right. Cool. Erase your board. Let's try a couple more. Negative 4, negative 1, and 5, 3. Ooh, these are going to be far apart. So get those graphed. Negative 4, negative 1. Down there in quadrant 3. 5, positive 3 is up there. If I'm looking at that one, and the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh, what's the slope of this thing? It's going upward. That means it's a positive slope. It's not too terribly steep. It doesn't look like it's a 45 degree angle, so it's probably a fraction that's less than one. If this, if I were coming up with the equation of this line, I would say, hey, um, it's certainly not proportional because it doesn't go through the origin. The y-intercept is some value a little less than positive one. Oh, for fun, I'm going to figure out the slope. I go up one. Up. One, two, three, four. So my rise is four. And the run, whoo! One, two, three, four. That gets me to the y axis. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Slope is four ninths. Yeah, that's not quite half. That's that's a pretty gradual line, but it's positive. All right. Four by nine. We've got a right triangle. Now if I'm asking you to find the length or the distance from this point to this point, use Pythagorean theorem. You've got your two legs. This is the hypotenuse. It's that 97, okay? So if I were being exact, I would say it's the square root of 97, done. However, just to get a feel for this, if I use my calculator to approximate this, I'm thinking, well, goodness sakes, the square root of 100 is exactly 10. So this is super close. Approximately. Grab our fabulous technology. Ding, ding, ding. 97. Yep, 9.8488. All right, so... I'm rounding this approximately 9.8 units. Cool. Okay. Makes sense. The third side, this hypotenuse side, always has to be the longest one because it's across from the long or the largest angle. Okay. <clears throat> and granted, it's not that much more, but at least it's larger. So we're good. All right. Erase. Let's try one more of these guys and let's see what's happening. Okay. Negative 3, 1, and 1, negative 4. Get these two plotted on here. Negative 3, 1. 1, negative 4. Hey, I'm looking at this one. And just for fun, I'm thinking the slope is negative this time. Because to get from this point to this point, my rise, I'm traveling downward. Okay? Specifically, I'm traveling from a level of 1 to a level of negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My run, I'm going to the right, which is positive, and that is 4. All right, so that's a little more than negative 1, so it's a little steeper than a 45-degree angle, not by much, because that's really just negative 1 and a fourth. But that tells me a lot about it. It tells me if I were looking for the equation of the line, it doesn't go through the origin not proportional, and it's crossing my y-axis to give me a y-intercept somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3. Yeah, alrighty. However, today our objective is finding the distance between these two points. Since this is negative 5 and this is 4, when I figured out my slope, when I'm dealing with a triangle, I'm just counting units and I'm talking about a distance or a length. So I'm not going to worry about that negative sign. I simply want to take and find the length of each side and then we'll use Pythagorean theorem. All 
Oh my gosh. Do I have another example that's just like the first one? 25 and 16, which is 41. So C is the square root of 41. Did I have that on the first one or was that one of 47? Oh, that was 41. Great. Good planning there. Get the same stinking answer. All right. So what we find out on this one, the square root of 41 is about 6.4 again. I can't say that that will happen very often on your worksheet. All right. So there's a gift. Last situation. What happens if you are not given a coordinate grid to go from? Okay. Well, you've got two options. One, you can draw it out. You can always draw it out and see what's going on. You know, 5, 2 is up here somewhere. Negative 4 and negative 3 is down here somewhere. Okay. Or if you can just simply figure out, all right, I'm going to have a right triangle. And I've got to figure out one of my legs is going to be the distance in between my x coordinates from a positive 5 over here to a negative 4. And if you're thinking of that 5 minus a negative 4, if you want to think of the difference between those two, you would get a positive 9. You get 9 for this distance. Your other leg is the difference in your y coordinates. So you have a positive 2 here, and then negative 3 is at this level here. And the difference between a positive 2 level to a negative 3 level this side here would be 5 because 2 minus a negative 3, that difference is positive 5. That's 9. So you have this triangle that's 5 squared and 9 squared, or, or I should say 5 and 9, and here's your hypotenuse. So go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem. You get 25 and 81. Add those up, we get about, what, 106. So the value of C is the square root of 106. Again, if I were going to leave this um, this way, that's the exact value. Using a calculator to approximate what's this square root, it's going to be a little more than 10 because the square root of 100 is exactly 10. So as I'm plugging this in, hang on square root 106 little more than 10 yep about 10.295630 so i would round that to the tenths place probably to about 10 and 3 tenths units okay cool so you're getting your feet wet on the coordinate system talking about distance and so what i would like you to do is now get this worksheet and um probably at the front of the room and go ahead and get started. Please show your work on here. Go ahead and draw the triangles so that you can get a visual and see what the two leg values are. Go from there. Good luck. May the force be with you.